So Safford Aslan in Newport in 1996 had this idea about how transitional probability could be used for speech segmentation, and they say this, that within a language, the transitional probability from one sound to the next will generally be highest when the two sounds follow one another in a word, but when they span a word boundary, that transitional probabilities are going to be relatively low. So okay, what, what is this? So a transitional probability is just a conditional probability. So we're going to abbreviate transitional probability, tra, prob for transitional probability, of A followed by B. So these be syllables, these could be sounds, right? And this is just the conditional probability of B given that you've seen A, right? So transitional probability of sequence AB is just the conditional probability of B given that A has been encountered. Okay, so what does this have to do with words? So let's consider the transitional probability of a word consisting of two syllables, like pretty. So what's the transitional probability of pre followed by t? Well, that's just the conditional probability of t given that you've seen pre. Okay, so how do we calculate that? Well, here's an example. So let's consider things that can follow the syllable pre. Uh, premonition, present, preliminary, pretty, prelude, right? These are, let's say, five options, and then maybe they're the only five options that you know of that could follow pre. So what's the transitional probability of pre followed by t? Well, there are five things that could follow pre. One of them is t, so it's one out of five. Now, the idea for using transitional probabilities for speech segmentation, which is uh, emblazoned up here really, is that you're looking for differences in transitional probabilities. So when you have higher transitional probability, the idea is that you're within a word. So pre followed by t, pretty, maybe has a higher transitional probability. But when you go across words, then they're lower. So t followed by k is lower than pre followed by t. It's also lower, right? So you're gonna put a word boundary there. It's also lower then ki followed by t, because kitty is an actual word. So the idea is you're looking for a dip in transitional probability. Lower transitional probability is signaling a word boundary has happened here, because the things before it kind of go together, the things after it kind of go together, but it has a lower sequence probability, this transitional probability. So here's a strategy that you could use that uses this idea, and it's looking for the minimum of transitional probabilities, right? And so in this case, pretty, pre followed by t has a pretty high one, k followed by t has a pretty high one, but t followed by k kind of low, that's a dip, that's a minimum, so you would put a word boundary there if you're using this kind of strategy. Now you can think about this uh, in, in relative terms, in terms, excuse me, importantly. Uh, it doesn't matter what the actual numbers are, right? This is relative. It's just talking about, is this one lower than the ones around it? If so, that's a minimum. So we can think about this in landscape terms, right? So, you know, you have the number corresponding to how high you are. So this is a middle number, this is a low number, that's a really high number, and a sequence of transitional probabilities is gonna be this landscape, right? And so a minimum transitional probability learner, one looking for transitional probability minima, is gonna put a boundary everywhere you have a dip where the one here is lower than the ones around it. So dip, whoop, dip, dip, like this. That's where you're putting boundaries. So let's see this with a, an actual example where we don't have a nice landscape drawn for us, but you can see it with an actual sequence of words that have, tran or syllables that have transitional probabilities between them, right? And I just made these up. These aren't necessarily true for English, but let's say that these are the ones that you have calculated. Okay, so when you're trying to find a minimum, you have to consider a group of three at a time. So let's consider the first group of three. 0.9 is greater than 0.4. And guess what? 0.4 is less than 0.8. So 0.4 is in fact a transitional probability minimum compared with the surrounding probabilities. So guess what? You'd put a boundary there. Great. Now let's consider the next sequence of three. 0.4 is still less than 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is in fact greater than 0.7. This is actually a maximum. It's not a minimum, so you're not going to be putting a transition or a word boundary there. This is not a minimum. Okay, no boundary. Let's move on to our next set of three. 0 0.8 versus 0 0.7. 0 0.8 is higher. 0 0.7 versus 0 0.9. 0 0.7 is lower. Guess what? We have a dip. Even though it's still a pretty high number, the point is that relative to the probabilities around it, it's a dip. So we actually would put a boundary there because it is a transitional probability minimum.
So great, here's where you put your boundaries. What kind of segmentation do you get from this? And the answer is a pretty good one, right? So what a is not actually a word, but pretty is a word and kitty is a word. So even though you have this under segmentation error where you should have split them apart, but you didn't, you're still doing pretty good with a transitional probability uh, minimum uh, strategy.